How's it going, guys? My name's Jose, aka Joe Engineer. And uh, we're going to try something a little different. We're going to see if we can replace the bushings on this coupler that are all worn out with These little brass ones. So let's see how that goes. <clears throat> Got these guys from Pelican Parts. tools we've got um, hammer a drift a block of wood with a one and a half inch hole in it so I can support the coupler here as I'm trying to pr press the pin out with the drift hopefully my block holds up it's kind of cracked and away we go So this was no fun, just a lot of banging and it wasn't really moving anywhere. So let's try the vise. There's a couple of flats on the, the steel portion where you can clamp onto. See if that works any better. That was easy. Right on. Look like they're melted.
Check out these old bushings. These sort of look like they're melted or something. I don't know what the heck was going on here. Hmm. Anyway, let's see if these brass ones are a better fit. Housing seems to be in good shape. Um, didn't crack it, didn't break it. Pin is okay. And uh, this uh, spline shaft is all right too. This is the part that I clamped onto in the vise. Just this bottom part here so I could drive, drive the pin out. Bushings are nice and smooth over the shaft. These aren't going in very easily. Maybe we got to deburr the aluminum a little bit. Hmm. Oh yeah. Okay. We have some deburring to do. I'm not filing down the bore, I'm just uh, taking off some burrs and high spots on the edges here that might be preventing the bushings from going in. Some very fine, very fine uh, files. Let's see if there's an interference fit between this ID and this OD. I know four. Nine oh four. Yeah. Nine oh four, nine oh five. Nine oh seven. 2000s, too big. I know six. When the 2000 too big. So we're gonna have to take a little bit of material off of here, maybe a little bit off of here, until we can get them to fit. I have no lathe, so we're gonna have to do this by hand. Sandpaper. This might take a while. Did a light sanding on each side. Uh, now it's down to maybe like about a half a thou of interference. I think that should be enough to, to be able to pop them in and not to, not to crack the cast aluminum. So let's see, let's see how we how we do. And they sort of um, 
you can feel they kind of go in a little bit and if you press if you keep pressing they might go all the way in so let's see if we can get them to stay in now i'm just gonna pop one in on this side i've already cleaned them with the carb cleaner make sure there's no garbage in there in between the two surfaces and uh, we're gonna try to tap these in with a washer that is the same diameter as the bushing the brass uh, bushing so I don't uh, imprint any anything on the surface and now I'm going to use a brass drift see if I can tap that guy in I'm gonna press it in just like I did on the vise with a nice little this nice little socket here. working One bushing in. Who marks on the brass? All right, we're halfway, halfway there. Okay, to press in the next one, I'm gonna put the other bushing into position. I can't use my the bigger socket I had because now this bushing is in the way so I'm gonna drop in that same washer that I had before and a penny that I had laid around just to cover up the hole and now I'm gonna press using this tiny junk 516 socket see if that is enough all right here goes nothing working look at that beautiful <laughs> no marring on the brass now we got two brass bushings Now, next thing I want to check is how much play there is between the uh, spline shaft and these bushings. I kind of want to get rid of the slop. So I sort of want to make or buy a shim that will fit, that is the same diameter as the cross pin and about the same OD as the bushings 
grease it up, lubricate it, and get rid of some of this play. So here's a closer look at the play that I was talking about. So the bushings are in, this blind shaft goes in here with the pin, cross pin going through it. There is some play in there. So if you've seen my shift coupler adjustment video, this side goes to the transmission um, shaft, gear selector shaft. And this side goes to the uh, shifter linkage. So when you turn the shifter, the shifter, you move the shifter quite a bit before this thing begins, before the coupler actually begins to move. So I can, I can go wiggle the shifter back and forth quite a bit and the coupler won't move because there's this much play in it. So what I would like to do is put a shim in here maybe one large one or a thin one on each side or something, split the, dif split the difference, center it, so that any movement in the front, when I move the shifter this way, or yeah, whichever way, that translates to a direct movement, direct rotation of the entire coupler, and none of this um, play back and forth. What I don't know is if I take all the play out, if um, it's going to cause any binding, like difficulty into reaching uh, maybe first and second and uh, fifth and reverse, as opposed to, you know, uh, um, third and fourth, which are in the in the center plane in this position. So you would just go straight, straight forward and backward. So um, yeah. I think we're going to shim it tight and then install it and see how it feels. If it doesn't feel good, then maybe we'll take one shim out until we find a, um, a uh, kind of a perfect, perfectly dialed in adjustment that we're happy with. All right, new day. If you recall, I was trying to figure out how to get some of this play from in between these two parts. And I actually went ahead and measured the space, which was the gap in here varies, but the smallest gap is about 650. Minus six twenty nine, twenty one thousandths, twenty one thousandths divided by two, <clears throat> about ten and a half thousandths per side is the room that I have in here now leaving about a couple thou on each side for room so it's not so tight that it actually binds. I think we could make do with some eight thousandths of an inch spacers or shims on each side. So I went ahead and went to my favorite hardware store in the whole world, McMaster Car, and I found some Arbor shims that are actually half inch by three quarter inch by eight thousandths that um, happen to be the perfect, should be the perfect fit here. As you, as you can see, they go over the shaft and they actually have a pretty decent amount of surface area to um, to not wear into the, the brass, hopefully. So let's check if they are actually eight thousandths of an inch thick. Got my little teeny weeny micrometer here. Six, seven, eight thou. 
This one is also. Six, seven, eight thousandths of an inch, and we're good. So, we put these together, put a shim on each side. I'm just sort of going to shove them in here for now. We should have a fairly tight assembly. So we're going to go ahead and try to press this shaft back in here with all the parts and the shims. First we got to clean up the shaft a little bit. It, um, you have to tap it in here and there's a couple couple burrs in here that we got to polish out first on the grinder. Air protection on. I said grinder earlier, but I actually meant buffer. Got to get rid of this little, there's a burr here I can feel with my fingernails. That's better. Beautiful. Maybe a tad more. Good enough. So it'll go through the bushings now, it doesn't catch on the burr. Should be a nice slip fit on the bushing side. Which it is. And <clears throat> on the shaft side, should be a light, light, light press fit. So goes in here, but the middle part's bigger because it's been staked to get wider. So, yeah, we're gonna have to press this guy in. All right, here we go. I'm actually a little unsure whether I should tap the pin back in or if I should, um, press it in. The pressing has been working very, very well. So I may, got my old trusty socket here again to align my shim. I'm going to put one shim here. Put in the Threaded shaft.
put in the other shim. All right. Come on. Come on, shim. Okay. Now we gotta pop this guy in. All right. <clears throat> Let me try tapping it in first because I don't know. I'm gonna be cranking on the vise and I don't know if I'm gonna pinch the shim on the backside here or not. So let me first try to tap it in with a hammer and a punch or a drip like last time. Mosquito problems here. Okay. <clears throat> See if this goes in. All right, I need to find a way to keep that other shim in place. Keep tapping and keep checking on the shim. Yep. I had a third hand. <laughs> Hold it with my belly. <laughs> Keep tapping. Keep checking. Come on, little shim. So close. I don't want it to bind. Well, I'll keep checking after each tap. Nowhere for the shim to go. Doing it. Nowhere to go. All right. Shim is now, or the end of the shaft is now past the shim. Let's double check that it sort of 
moves around a little bit. Sort of see the end of it. Yeah. Yeah. Perfect. I can slide the the shim on the far side back and forth, which means that it's past past the end of the shaft and it's moving around. So we're good. I can drive it the rest of the way in. It's pretty easy. All right. Check it again. Okay, no, shims good. Shims are good. Beautiful. Look at that. All right, so I've now driven the edge flush with the bushing on both sides, more or less. Still has this movement here. You can still move along the axis of the pin the way it's supposed to, but now Side to side, there's very little play. I mean, enough for it not to bind, but I think upstream at the shifter, I'm hoping that you won't be able to feel it. But we're, this is beautiful. Now I just need to lube it up, install it back in the car, and uh, see how it feels. Also, as a point of reference, these bushings cost about 35 bucks a set. These shims, I think were about $4 for a 10 pack from McMaster. So $39 for the parts. Um, you know, if you have a junk coupler laying around, you could do this for $39 and essentially have the same function as some of the fancier units out there that are basically just a, um, a very tight fit U-joint or helicopter, a precision U-joint called the helicopter joint that has a rubber rubber boot around it with some grease in there. Uh, they function the exact same way except those go for a lot more money. So this is a good alternative if you want to stick with um, OE, OE component, as many OE components as possible. Just sort of splooging it in there, and then I'll uh, wipe off the excess later. This is lithium grease, in case uh, anyone is wondering. Honestly, it probably doesn't even need that much grease because it goes through such a... At most, it's going to move a few degrees. 
this is the extent of its travel. It's going to go, you know, it's going to go this way, that way, and move a few degrees, and that's it. But may as well lube this thing as much as possible. I don't know if I can shove any grease in there. Maybe I should have greased it beforehand. It probably doesn't matter very much anyway. Make a big mess here. Done. So here's my old shift coupler. If you recall, this is the same one that I installed in my shift coupler adjustment video. And actually, this one has the OE bushings on it. And um, they have maybe, I don't know, less than 700 miles on them. So, for all intents and purposes, they are new. So, and to be honest, it, it shifts okay. It does the job. But we're looking for that extra little bit of refinement and I'm about to show you how much play this actually has in it check out the spline shaft you see how it just barely wiggles back and forth so in order to get it to do that this is how much play there is in the shifter handle itself about that much Now, forward and backward, there isn't a ton of play, but there is ever so slightly some play in there because the holes in the bushings are slotted, if you recall. So this movement translates to this much about that much movement on the shifter. So, not terrible, but we're looking for every little bit of improvement that we can get. So let's put the new coupler in, adjust it, and see how it feels. Here's another close-up for you. Here's the old coupler with these slotted bushings. So there's play forward and backward, as well as side to side. New coupler has round holes, no play forward or backward, and has been shimmed to have virtually no play or very little play side to side as well. Moment of truth. Well, the slop is gone. 
the only slop left in the shifter handle is in the shifter assembly itself, which is not much because I just rebuilt my shifter, but yeah, no more slop left. It's hard to tell from here if uh, this made any improvement. I need to drive it to be sure. But I can tell you that um, it generally feels a little notchier, which might be a good thing, maybe. And um, for sure, it was a lot more finicky to adjust the coupler. Um, it took me a few more tries using the, the normal coupler method. But I don't know if that means that the, the old bushings have enough slop that it uh, allows it to kind of fall into gear easier but they, these bushings are a little less forgiving and you need to be pretty dead on with the adjustment it might take a few more tries but the old method still works so let's take it for a spin and see how it feels Two shift. I don't know if you saw, but I had to kind of click it, get it into that, that second uh, gear, final seated position. Beautiful. I now know where third gear is. <laughs> adjusted plastic bushings I'm not sure maybe maybe not is it more durable than the plastic bushings possibly um, either way for the $39 investment to do this I think it's well worth it so for me for me I'm happy and I see the results so now I'm going to go ahead and uh, enjoy my, my drive here as I approach my local canyon. Thank you for watching this. And uh, if this helped you, please like and subscribe. And I'll see you next time.